Okay, welcome back. So in this next small session, we're going to be taking a look at using ifs in Excel. So we've already done some functions, so we're really going to build on what we've already done. Okay, so the first thing I'd like you to do is to take a look at your objective. So you'll see the objective in front of you. So I'd like you to read it and then give yourself a score between 1 and 10, depending on how confident you feel about that at the moment. So 1 would be the least confident and 10 the most. Great. Okay, so I'm guessing from that you haven't done it much before, Shruti? Heard it, but I don't know what it is. Okay, thank you. Nick? No, I've never used them at all. Okay. Well, as it's new for both of you, what we'll do is we'll have a look at using it together. We'll do a bit of a workshop. And once we've done one, I'll then give you the chance to think about how you might use it at work. Um, and then we'll do another practice, and then um, we've got a little recap and an exercise for you. Okay. So, let's get started, then. We're going to have a look at it. We're going to start off just using the flip chart. So, you get to see my beautiful drawing here. Okay. So, just like the functions that we saw earlier, they start with equals and then a word. This one's got three parts, so we've got uh, some kind of logical test. So here, is it raining? Okay. Then what to do if it's true? Take an umbrella. And finally, what to do if it's false? Take your sunglasses. Okay. So, just got that, got that up here. Okay. okay. Why do we need the brackets around the whole thing? To show that's that's it. That. Absolutely. That's, that's where that, it starts and ends. Exactly. That's where it starts and ends. Now, we're going to have a go at doing this with this spreadsheet that we've got in front of us. I've borrowed this from Jane, who looks after our invoices. So it's got a list of the invoices, um, the date that they are due to be paid. Now, some of them have been paid, but lots of them haven't. And what Jane normally has to do is sit and work out which ones are overdue, which ones are most overdue, that she, so that she can ring up and chase for payment. Okay. What we're going to do today is try and make it a little bit easier for her. Okay. Now, have a look in B1. What have we got in there that might help us with this formula? Today's date. Today's date. Why do you think I've put that up there? So you can use that as reference to whether or not we've overdue on the payment. Great, yeah. So we've got something there that we can refer to again and again when we want to work out whether or not we're overdue on the payment. Yeah? Why do we want to do that rather than just putting maybe a date in the middle of our function? That could go wrong. It could go <laughs> wrong, yeah. In what ways might it go wrong? Put in the wrong date. Yeah. What would happen tomorrow if we put in today's date in the function? It wouldn't change, so it wouldn't be a true indication. Yeah, absolutely. So we'd have to update it time and time again. So we're putting things in to try and make it as easy as possible for us so that it'll update itself. Okay, so let's have a go together at building the if. So how do we start off our function? The equals. Great. And then? If. if. Okay, now we're ready for our logical test. So we wanted to say if what, which date? The payment due. Payment due. And what would be the easiest way to pick that up? Click on it. Click on it, great. So if D4. So if D4 is? Less than. Less than. And then which cell do we need to pick up? B1. B1. Now, that's our test. Is there anything you might want to do to that so that when we copy the formula down, it's going to be the same each time? Fix it. Fix it, OK. And what do we, do you remember what we pressed earlier to fix? F4. 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 Okay, so you should know how D4 is less than $B$1. Okay, we've finished our logical test. How do we tell Excel that? Comma. Comma, okay. And what would you like Excel to do if this is overdue? Say yes. Okay. Now, yes, obviously, is a word. And usually with Excel, we've been working with numbers and cell references. So do either of you know what we need to type around the yes so that it knows that it's text? Quotations. Great, that's it. So let's put in our quotations. Okay. Another comma so it knows we're moving on. And finally, what should we put in? No. <laughs> Great, our false part, which in our case is no. Okay, how do we finish it up? Let Excel know we're done. Close bracket. Okay, let's close that bracket. Okay. Okay, let's accept that. Ooh. Is our first invoice overdue? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, how do we quickly fill that down for the rest? Double click. 
autofill. Ah, oh, great. So you can double click or fill down as you did there, Shruti. Yeah. Lovely. OK, just have a quick look. Does it look about right? Where we've paid yeah. it, it's not there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Further down, hopefully, with the newer invoices, they're not overdue yet. Yeah. yeah. Great. OK, so now that you've seen one working, what I'd like to do is to give you a moment to think about your own work. So think about the spreadsheets that you use. Is there anywhere where you could use an if, perhaps to make your life a bit easier, or perhaps to automate something like we have done here for Jane? OK, so I'd like to give you a couple of minutes just to discuss that. So just between the two of you. I could use this. I could use this for st stock control. Yeah. I could get it to tell me if I need to order stock and things like that. That's true. What about you? Um, I think mine's quite similar in terms of invoices. Oh, right. What are you doing? A lot of invoices, yes. It's perfect. Okay, cool. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Great, OK, so some nice examples there. Stock control is one that comes up quite a lot. OK, any questions with anything that we've done there? OK, so what we'll do is just a little bit of a recap and then we'll give you an exercise just to give you a chance to practice that. So, first of all, um, if we're going to use an if, how many different parts are there to an if? Shruti? Three. Three, great, OK. So we have the, first of all, the logical test, then what to do if it's... If it's true. True, and then what to do if it's false. false. Great. And um, how do we split up those three parts? If we're typing it in ourselves, what do we need to put in? Commas. Commas, OK. And um, what about if we're using text in there? So we use, for example, yes and no. Um, what did we use to make sure that Excel understood that it was text? It didn't need to do anything funny with it. Quotations. Great. Yep, put it all in inverted commas. OK, so it looks like you're ready to do your exercise. So if you have a look on the sheets in front of you, there's a little exercise there, just to give you the chance to practice it again and think about how you're going to use it yourselves. I'm not quite sure how to put the test in. OK, let's have a look together. So, great, you've got it started off. Yeah. OK, so what's the rule do you think they're going to use to decide whether or not each of these people are going to get a grant? What do you think their income must be less than? Um, that 23,000. Great, OK, so do you remember how we built that before? So if you want to say something is less than something else, what would we need to do first of all? Have one of them in there. OK, yeah. so which one is the one that we're going to use to measure against? OK, we can start with that one. Actually, I'll tell you what, let's start with the other one because it's a bit easier. It's more like how you would say it in your mind. So if say, I would say if their income is less than the threshold, they're going to get a grant. Right. OK, so you've clicked on their income. Mm -hmm. So what symbol did we use for the less than one? Uh, that one. Yeah. OK, and then we want to know if it's less than what? The threshold. That's it? That's yeah. your logical test. Is there okay. anything you might need to do to that one, though, just to make sure that it's going to be fixed? Yeah. yeah. Perfect. That looks great. And then you need to get on with the rest. How are you doing there, Nick? Mine's all. No. Ah, OK. It, so the first one no. looks great, doesn't it? And so does that one. Something one. not Some of them are right and some of them are wrong. OK, let's have a look back at the first one. Which cells are you using there? B5 is less than B2. Yeah. That's really good. OK, let's look at the second one down and have a look at which cells we're using in that one. B6 is less than B3. Anything? Oh, I forgot to fix. Oh. Great. So which one should we go back and edit? That one. <laughs> Spot on. Well done. I always forget to do okay, that. That looks great, Shruti. That's better. OK. That looks good. Well done, both of you. Any questions there? Now you've done the exercise. Again, you might be thinking about how you use it back at work. I have to con like consolidate books at the end of the week so I could double check figures like you said with it as well to make sure they tally and things like that. Save me so much time. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what about for you, Shruti? Anywhere else you think you could use it as well as your invoice? Yeah. Use it? Um, budgets. To know if I've gone over budgets, I've got different budgets for different products. So this would be really useful. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, so the last thing I'd like you to do, just to finish up, is have a look back at your objectives. At the beginning you gave yourself a score out of 10. Mm -hmm. Could you re-score yourself now at the end? Okay, and so we're going to take a break next and when we come back we're going to be looking at working with multiple worksheets.